What's up guys, PJ from 3D Printing Canada here. Today in front of me, I've got the Ender 6, so we're gonna unbox and build this for you today. All right, so we got some foam, rid of that, instruction manual. We got the plexiglass pieces coming out here. I got three pieces. Box with parts probably and accessories. We have our build plate. Looks like part of our Z axis. Filament runout sensor, filament holder. Some extrusion. The upper gantry and hot end section. All the outside plastic pieces. And last but not least, our base plate. Get that box out of the way. That one's a little too big to throw at Jaron, so we'll be nice today. Okay, with all the parts on the table now, I'm gonna move forward on that build video. All right, so the first step in the instruction manual is to take these four pieces of 2040 extrusion and install them. Now they give you stickers on both the base plate and the extrusion, the 2040 extrusion. Now one going with one with the arrow pointing inward, same with two. And it's the M5 by 45 bolts. Now I'm just gonna hang the printer off of the front a bit so I can take the provided Allen wrench and take that M5 by 45 Get it started here. I'm going to thread in. You know, no need to over tighten these, just make sure they're nice and secure. And then I'll take the second side. All right, so next we're gonna take the one with the breakout board on it. That's gonna plug into our cable here. I'm gonna slide the printer back again and let it hang over the bed a bit. So, excuse me, the table a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and install these last two. Okay, now that we've got those installed, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna take your top gantry and you're gonna rest it on top. We've got that in place. I am going to go ahead and take the M4 by 45 again. And same process. Just install those. I'm gonna go around and do all four. Hand tighten first to make sure everything's lined up correctly. Which is very important when building one of these. So if you find something's off a bit, you definitely wanna and once you've got them all threaded in, go ahead and secure those down. Now I'm just gonna go around to all four corners and secure them all. Okay guys, so the next step, we're gonna attach the bed to the Z axis. Now you wanna bring this plate low enough that it's gonna be underneath the bed so you can move it up to secure it after we get the bed attached to the Z rail. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna lay this flat on the table. I'm gonna slide the bed into the rollers, the roller cages, and I'm gonna line up the first one. Just get it hand started. That way it's supporting the bed. And now that we have that plate underneath, I'm also gonna be threading those in as well. And I'll uh, turn this around in just a second here and give you guys a better visual. Okay, I'm just gonna start my four screws for now. Let's get them in the threads. Now I'm just gonna take this, turn it around and show you guys. So now you can just go ahead and thread the Z axis plate here up against the bed. Take two more of the M20s, 
Go ahead and thread those into the bottom of the bed here. There is a point where, there we go, into both sides. We'll go ahead and tighten these down first. I'm only going to snug this side and then I'm going to fi finish putting this one in. Then I'm going to lift this up so you can see here. I'm just going to tighten down to the Z roller cages with the bed frame. We're going to tighten those down now. And then again on the other side. All right. So this next step, guys, is where I'm actually going to slide the bed into the frame. Now, we're going to have to take this, we're going to have to put it in on an angle like this. Just be careful. You don't want to be knocking things around at this point, guys. So we want to make sure we don't pinch any wires or bang anything up. So very easy, just drops right in here in that little hole in the back. And you're going to take four of the M five by 25 screws. All right, we're gonna turn this around to the back where you can see the four provided pre-drilled holes in our extrusion here. I'm gonna make sure that's sitting in correctly. I'm gonna come around the other side of the table here, guys. All right. Now with this one, should be lined up just the way it sits. So let's see how it is. Yep. Just kinda gotta pull back on it a little bit. It's lined right up there. Again, I'm only gonna snug these ones down at first until I have all four in. You might notice I'm going corner to corner. That's just to make sure that everything's lined up properly. Now this one, I'm gonna torque it down a little bit tighter than most because this is the Z-axis. And I wanna make sure that our Z-axis is really secure. And in the top, we're going to do the exact same thing. Corner to corner, make sure we're lined up. And then again, I'll snug them all down and then torque these ones down really nice. While I'm here, I'm going to take the bed wire, plug it in, plug in your thermistor. So your bed power and thermistor are now plugged in. So we've got this breakout here board here with the main uh, cable to take it down to the motherboard. And then the rest of our plugs will plug into that. Okay guys, so the next step here is we're gonna take our side panel. So you're gonna take your three mil hex wrench now. And the nice thing about this printer is they've threaded all the inserts. So no T-nuts guys, I really like that. Can't go wrong there. The next step here we're gonna take, all right, is installing the extruder motor. It's gonna be a little bit difficult to get exactly on camera, but this bracket is basically, it's got grooves so you can adjust it back and forth to where it needs to be. But all it does is slides in through here, and then you take your M4 by 16. Now they've pre-drilled holes. And because of the slots, you can adjust it back and forth to fit how you need. So I'm gonna get one prepared here. I'm gonna put my driver on, uh, bolt on my driver. I'm gonna go ahead and slide the motor through. And this might be a little hard for you guys to see with me in the way, I do apologize. But you're just gonna thread that in. I'm gonna take the next screw here, same thing. Go ahead and tighten down this, these bolts now. And next we're gonna take our filament runout sensor. Same M4 bolts as well. This is very simple. We're going to do the same thing here. Now the filament sensor with the arrow pointing up, slide it in through the groove. Two of those M4 bolts. Again, I'm gonna put it on my driver ahead of time so I can slide my filament runout sensor through the plexiglass 
and same installation process. Now you can adjust it so it can line up with the hole perfectly. See, you can move it back and forth here. So I'm just gonna snug it up. And you can take a piece of filament and run it through your extruder and then tighten these down. So now we're gonna take and install all the plastic corner pieces, guys. So make sure you have them lined up right. Uh, there is pictures in the manual so you can see how to do it, but there's these little grooves inside that need to slide in place. And then these clips that are gonna clip into your extrusion. So I'll go ahead and slide that in, give it a little hit. Same with the top. So next guys, everything's sticker and color coordinated. All you have to do on the breakout board is go ahead and read the label and plug which label goes into which part. So your fan goes into your fan, K fan into K fan. And one nice thing about this printer is it has on the breakout board a BL touch spot. So they do have provided firmware. You can install a BL touch on this printer with ease, which is wonderful. And I'm going to take my Y and my E, just like any other 3D printer. You'll take that clip out because it comes pre-installed. You'll take your Bowden tube, push down, make sure it reaches all the way to the base and insert your clip. So we are running a filament sensor. They give you a provided wire, which is gonna come through the hole in the plexiglass, very simple. The instructions are actually very self-explanatory on this one. Now on the breakout board, it says DET, which stands for detection, which is filament detection. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in. We are also going to need to take our Z motor, which is taped to the bottom of the printer. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and plug that in as well. Okay, so now you got that, tuck it up inside that little hole. So now you've got your Z motor installed. We're gonna go ahead and take our X, plug in our X, and then on this side, make sure that's out of the way. We will take our Y, plug in our Y motor because our Y motor is really close to our breakout board. And next we just have our extruder. It's gonna go out to the motor here. We're gonna plug that in to our motor. And we don't actually need the little hole because it plugs in right here. Now that we've got all our wiring together, all our axes are plugged in. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna install the back panel. And then again, we've got the M4 by 20 bolts. Take our back panel here. And our M4 by 20s. Make sure our bed wire is inside now. And you just go ahead and Creality's pre drilled and threaded all of the, just putting in by hand some of our bolts. Oh, there are lids gonna be available for this printer, so you will be able to put a lid and retain some heat in there for printing ABS, things like that. If you maybe wanted to get into some nylon or anything like that, you could, could do that with this printer once the lids come in. And then you just wanna go ahead and make sure you have it on the right way. 
and thread it into the provided holes. So I'm just gonna snug those down for now. That way if I have to adjust the doors and then I'm gonna go ahead and install our second door. Same procedure as the first door. Now, let's make sure these doors close okay. They do. I'm gonna go ahead and install the other screws. Okay guys, the last step we have here is the final side panel to put the icing on the cake and make this baby look beautiful. So it simply installs. Now if you don't have it the right way, the holes won't line up. And again, one other thing I really liked about this is the fact that they threaded the extrusion. No T-nuts. That's, in my, I, in my opinion, is key. So we'll go ahead and take these final few bolts. Now, be careful when tightening against plexiglass. You over tighten that, you will crack it. Okay, guys, now that we've got the printer all assembled, I'm actually really impressed with the build. It was relatively easy. They did all the proper things on this one where they did all the threaded inserts to make the build very easy. I'm actually really thrilled to take this down into my technical room and start doing some test prints and show you what this baby can do, guys. So guys, back from the tech room after running some prints, or we only did things in one color. I've been extremely busy around the shop lately with repairs and whatnot. But uh, let's take a look at these prints. So we did a little Casper the Friendly Ghost, the famous Matter Hackers astronaut, which is, I, I mean, this is my go-to just for a quick test print, and something in spiral vase mode. Um, this is all done on stock settings, guys, so keep that in mind. Uh, we haven't done any tweaking or dialing. It's also done in our value green PLA, which is a very affordable PLA that still prints really nice. As you can see, this is without any slicer tuning. So the Ender 6 is a great machine. I, I like it, printed great out of the box. We will have coming up a BL Touch installation, which is extremely easy, so stay tuned for that. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Tell your friends about us, and we'll see you in the next video.